Jimmy Kimmel Live. I'm your guest host, Maren Morris. I am thrilled to be doing this. I flew all the way from Nashville to be here tonight. I, woo yeah. I came here on Delta, and hopefully I'm not coming back with Delta. <clears throat> Now, some people have said, Marin, you're a country singer. What business do you have hosting a late-night comedy show? And to them, I say, Mom, get out of my dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> now, but I love being in LA. I'm doing all of the touristy things. I saw the Chinese theater. The Hollywood Boulevard Elmo threw up in my purse. <laughs> That's good luck, right? <laughs> you know, we're right across the street from where they used to film American Idol. And I actually auditioned for Idol when I was 17, and I got turned down. <laughs> Didn't even make it past the first round. But I stuck with it, and 10 years later, I won a Grammy. So. <laughs> yeah. And when I was nine, I auditioned to be the host of The Man Show. And I didn't get, I didn't get that either, but look at me now. I'm Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> Like most people, I've had a stressful year, mostly because when I wear a mask, my name sounds like Karen. <laughs> I also gave birth to my first child in March of 2020. <laughs> which means I have spent the whole pandemic in quarantine with an infant. So basically, this next hour is a vacation for me. <laughs> I don't care how much you cry, I will not be breastfeeding any of you. <laughs> Got it, Guillermo? Got it. <laughs> this is Guillermo's first day back to work. Yeah. Um, he got COVID and has been holed up at home for the past two weeks, but he's back. He's better than ever and ready to do whatever it is he does here. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. What feeling would you like to tell your adoring fans? I want to thank you for all the love and support and go get the Vaccine, please. It's important to get your vaccine. I got mine, and after the first shot, I felt nothing. After the second shot, I had some light flu symptoms. After the third shot, I was a little sore. <laughs> after my fourth, I was really feeling it. <laughs> and after shot 27, I got banned for life from Walgreens. <laughs> Guillermo wasn't the only one who had to get up early today. It was back to school day here in LA. Did you know that it's illegal to send your kids back to school without posting a backpack photo of them on Instagram? <laughs> For real, 10 years in federal prison. <laughs> Health officials are worried about kids returning to the classroom because one of the biggest ways COVID is spread is when parents breathe a huge sigh of relief. <laughs> You know, I never tormented my teachers because I'm a good person, but a lot of students did. So in honor of the first day of school, we sent a camera out on Hollywood Boulevard to let people apologize for all the terrible stuff they did to the brave souls who were just trying to educate them. Do you have any teachers you'd like to apologize to? In sixth or seventh grade, our teacher, Ms. Coakley, had left her laptop open, and me and my best friend didn't have the best grades in that class. Um, so we logged onto her laptop and changed our grades. Um, and she started crying because she said that she had really trusted us. I'm sorry, Ms. Coakley. You're, you're a great teacher. Do you have any teachers you'd like to apologize to? Yeah, um, to my second grade teacher. Um, I asked her when she was going to give birth. Uh, it turns out she wasn't pregnant. So uh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, my 10th uh, grade English teacher. The reason I want to apologize is we used to take uh, a dog whistle in and sit in the back of the class and blow it, and it would, uh, <laughs> it would fire off her uh, hearing aids all class. So, Miss S, I apologize. Tony Fiola, our high school speech and debate coach and English, our English teacher. teacher. We must have tormented this guy so much. We would change our grades, we would lock him out of our classroom. So sorry, Fig, and, but and, thank you for all you've done. <laughs> yeah, thank you, but I also don't think it's a coincidence he retired right after we graduated. <laughs> I would like to apologize to my Armenian school um, teacher. Sorry for driving you so insane that you told me that you have to take medications to calm down because of me. I want to apologize to my teacher, Ms. Robertson. I've always been sleeping in class instead of doing my work, and I'm sorry for sleeping so much. It's the pills. 
Is that why your eyes are so red? Yes. Do you have any teachers you'd like to apologize to? My third grade teacher, Miss Sandy. Um, when we were in third grade, her wig fell off without her knowing, and it gave she, she, she gave it some time before she noticed. By that point, all the kids were passing it around without her knowing. It got to me. I brought it home accidentally, and my dog got to it. So the dog was chewing on it and whatever, saliva, but I got it back, so it was still in one piece. It was just very dirty. Got back to school and returned it without her knowing. And when she found it, she went to the bathroom and put it on, and I felt bad ever since. So I would like to apologize to Miss Sandy. Detention for all of you. This is actually the perfect night for me to be doing my first late night monologue because it's National Tell-A-Joke Day. Then again, every day is National Tell-A-Joke Day if you're my dad talking to the wait staff at a restaurant. <laughs> Guillermo, you're a dad, right? Yes. What's your favorite joke? Oh, okay. My favorite joke is four Mexicans in a car. <laughs> Who's driving? Who? The police. <laughs> First, first day back and you're already canceled? <laughs> uh, sadly, this next one is not a joke. A local news anchor in Milwaukee, Wisconsin quoted the lyrics to one of my songs live on the air. Well, sort of. Carl, to put it shortly, the reason why we had such unprecedented conditions was it's almost a perfect storm of conditions that you have to look down into the soil. The roots, also the drought, you can all blame that together. I'll have more details in that forecast, and I'll nerd out a little bit less coming up later in the show. All right, I didn't know you'd go that deep with it, Eric, but thank you. I'll just quote Marin Mo Morris. If the, the house don't fall, if the roots are strong, I think. I might have butchered that lyric there. Yeah, you definitely butchered that lyric, bud. <laughs> it's the house don't fall when the bones are good, and I'm pretty sure houses don't have roots. <laughs> but that song's only been streamed like 700 million times. Well, whatever. <laughs> A lot of fun tonight. We have music from Gabriel's. <laughs> one of my favorite actors from one of my favorite shows, the hilarious Meg Stalter from Hacks is here. <laughs> Sutton Strap from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is with us. <laughs> and the great living legend, Willie Nelson will be joining us from his home in Austin. <laughs> couldn't be here in person, he did send me some brownies. So if you can't find me later, I'll probably be freaking out on the roof. <laughs> Speaking of pot, it's legal here in LA, but that's, Woo! yes, okay. <laughs> but that's not the case everywhere in America. And it's hard to keep track of where you can and can't smoke. So I spent the weekend doing some research and I turned that research into a song, but you probably wouldn't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> So before you tour the country, know the states where you can toke. <laughs> California's down with doobies, from Oakland to Hollywood. And in Washington and Oregon, it's cool to spark that green. Nevada hits the jackpot, Colorado's a mile high. Michigan's always holding, Montana's looking fried. Plays across the USA, let's light up legally. From the purple hazy mountains, from the sea to THC. New Mexico and Arizona, get high with the cacti. You're free to enjoy in Illinois, get lit as the Alaskan sky. Up in Maine, all the moose get loose, the leaves in Vermont are great. Get wicked wasted in Massachusetts and smoke the Garden State. Virginia is for stoners, Connecticut is cool with Kush, and over in Nebraska, it's 
decriminalized, which means, well, technically illegal, it's only a fine for one ounce or less, although be careful because selling it is still a felony, which can carry a sentence up to, but not exactly exceeding... Mary Morris, this yes. part is kind of boring. Can you go back to the fun part, please? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Where was I? Blaze across the USA, let's light up legally From the purple hazy mountains, from C to THC And even in New York City, Lady Liberty's got a light. So grab a bong big as King Kong and eat famous rays all night. Oh, plays across the USA, it's light up legally from the purple. 